Hey everyone, it's Mark Wiens. I'm in Santa Ana in Guatemala. And today we have the honor to see the entire process cooking a dish that's called kak ik. It's a beautiful morning in, we're actually in Santa Ana, Guatemala, which is just outside of Antigua, Guatemala. This place is stunningly beautiful. We are surrounded by volcanoes and it's lush, it's green, people are friendly. You have the incredible Spanish Baroque architecture. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But the plan for today is that we are meeting up with Rebecca. She's a chef, she's a Guatemalan food expert. And we're making a dish, it's called kakik, which is one of the most significant foods in all of Guatemala. It's so clean, so fresh. And we're gonna see the entire process, all the way from a live turkey to how they roast, how they toast all the different spices and grind them to put them into this dish. So everyone say hello to Rebecca. Hi. Very nice to meet you. Rebecca, can you just tell us what you do? Yeah, well, I'm a Guatemalan cook, but okay. today we are going to be with a local family that will uh, teach us how to make kakik. Kakik is a sacred ceremonial dish from the Kakchi Mayan ethnics. And Odilia's family, his, her husband, okay. oh, uh, hola. Hola, has learned to make an original kakik recipe, so we're going to make it everything from scratch. Hola. Hola. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Kakik, is it a dish that would be eaten only occasionally on ceremonial days, or is it? Originally, it's, it was for rituals or okay. for special dates, but okay. because it has been since 2007 an emblematic Guatemalan dish, so you can find it in every restaurant. In, okay. in the departments of Alta Verapaz and Baja Verapaz, it's something that you will find in all restaurants and houses because it's like an iconic dish. Ah, but okay. it is originally a very sacred dish because you'll see that it's red, so red represents blood uh, oh, okay. and rituals, so okay. that's what we're going to to see how they make it. Thank you. Well, something very important about this recipe is that um, we use a very specific uh, pepper that is called cabonero or cobanero pepper, which is a dry pepper that they use. It has okay. a very smoky is that, flavor. Is that this one? Yeah, this okay. one. And once it's grinded, it comes this kind of powder. Ah, okay. And a very mild aromatic herb that they use that it's endemic from here, it's samat. It's a Mayan endemic herb. It comes ah. from here, from Guatemala. So if you smell it, it's yeah. like smelling cilantro. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very nice. Yes. So these three ingredients are a must, plus the... Uh, the meat that is okay. the chunto. And so here's the star of the show. And we've got an all outdoor kitchen cooking in ceramics over fire. The turkey is on its way, but Auntie was just explaining that she's been making this dish for 20 or 25 years, but cooking for over 60 years. That hot water will definitely help with removing all of the, the feathers and preparing the turkey. It's very easy to take off the feathers. Oh, okay, okay. You can see here it's like very little... tiny feathers that are very hard to take out. So the yeah, final sure. step for taking out all the feathers is to put it uh, a little bit on the fire. Quick singe over the fire, quick wash, but you could just tell her immense experience and just how fast, how quickly she prepares that turkey. They're still chopping up the turkey and mm -hmm putting it into bite-sized pieces. Rebecca was just explaining that this is a, I mean, it's a Mayan origin dish, but it's also been influenced by some of the Spanish. Yes, because originally Mayan food was, uh, the protein that they, they mainly used was wild animals or 
fish, seashells, or something like that. Okay, okay. They were almost pescatarian, but once uh, Spain came, they brought all that were pork, uh, beef, chicken, uh, the domestic turkey, and they okay. started to bring uh, some of the most common ingredients, that is onion, garlic, uh, cilantro, and a lot of arom aromatic herbs, and Spaniards like to cook a lot with a lot of pork fat. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so this dish, it's a, a mixture of Mayan and Spanish. And Spanish, yeah. Right okay. now, it is influenced by the two cultures. Uh, some of the techniques that we're gonna see right now are 100% Mayan. Some of the ingredients are Mayan, but the other ones that I already said is uh -huh. from Spain. So that kind of mix between two cultures, we call it a mestizo cuisine or mestizo ah, culture. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now they're really getting started on the main part of the recipe, and the turkey goes into boiling water over fire in a giant uh, ceramic pot. Cilantro y cebollín, la cola de la cebolla. So that's like the base to give you aroma and flavor to the kakik. It has uh, cilantro, hierbabuena, that's a type of mint. Okay. And the green part of the uh, onions. Oh, okay. And one of the things that I love so much is after the turkey goes in, then she starts adding in the ingredients, but not chopped at all, just whole, raw, fresh ingredients. That's gonna provide so much flavor into that broth, into that soup. Right? But then on the other side of the kitchen, or on the, the next burner, on the next fire, then they're just roasting some of the ingredients. Uh, so tomatoes are on there first. Wacky. Yeah, that's the dried pepper. Uh, that it's called chile guaque. It's very common to see it in our stews. It gives a very reddish color to the stews, a little bit of flavor, and the other one that they use it is the raisin pepper. Oh, okay. Once you open, it has a raisin aroma. Oh, and yeah, when you roast them, you can smell that aroma coming out of them as well. Everything gets fire roasted, charred to bring out that flavor, the full aroma potential. The great things about Central America and here in Guatemala is that the chilies, some of them are spicy, but others of them are also used for the aroma, for the depth of flavor. Chilies have such a complexity, even fruitiness. And so that one, I mean, it even smells kind of raisiny. Um, so the variety of chilies are all gonna go into the recipe. The cubanero pepper. So cayenne pepper. So these ones are spicy. Yes, that ones are the spicy. Okay, and she really takes care to roast everything with precision and also checking it to make sure those chilies are like crispy, charred, bringing out the flavor, the skin, the seeds, and then these are the little, the little peppers that are the spicy ones that are essential in this recipe. Oh, yes. Oh, I love it. Oh, I could bathe in the, the sweet smoke of chilies roasting. Oh, that smells incredible, unbelievable. And all of these are gonna go into the kakik. Oh, even the cilantro. Cilantro. Cilantro, even the cilantro gets the fire treatment. Oh man, that charred cilantro is incredible. Just wilts, chars, gives it a totally different, unique fragrance to it. Turkey broth now goes into the roasted charred ingredients. Oh, so that will kind of like soften all of the ingredients too. Yeah, and okay. this is the okay. most important part of the kakik. This is something that is in danger of extinction. This, this technique is usually used by our grandmas and our ancestors. The grinding stone might have more than 3,000 years old in using. So, Passed down from generation to generation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Like for a chef, a uh, very appreciates uh, utensil is knife. Mm -hmm. For mine culture and Guatemalan culture is the grinding stone. It says about the grinding stone and the secret of grinding it and blending it is that the grinding stone usually has uh, memory. It preserves the memory uh, of, of the recent so juice, so, so it gives that magic flavor. Like not rim. only, not only does the taste improve because of the the slow grinding, but mm -hmm. even the 
the memories and the, the memories it has the just the significance of it yes okay you can just see all of those juices coming out of the tomato the seeds being flattened all that crunchy crispy uh chiles are then just being ground into a pulp and yet it's not because it's a grinding stone it's not too fine it still has a little bit of texture to it and just it is unbelievably aromatic the smoky toasty chilies tomatoes onions coriander wow that smells incredible oh, that is a heavenly aroma oh oh you want to bathe in that it's so good smelling wow Okay, so achiote, and that will give it a really red color, right? So now the the samat will go in and already you can start to see the turkey has started to release that fat oil that into the broth um, that gets all together and then she adds the samit which i believe is similar to culantro or shadow benny uh, but it's native indigenous mayan ingredient so that needs to boil simmer for 30 minutes or so uh, maybe longer but in the meantime uh, you eat kakik with tamales and so we're gonna see now some of the preparation for that as this continues to boil masa de maiz. okay so this is the masa. Oh, okay. So here's the pork lard. This is the pork lard that goes in. And salt goes in. Tamales is our original uh, mine food. Pork lard to give a little bit of softness and flavor. Oh, okay. But that came at a later point in time. The yes, pork lard. Okay. Later. So before it wasn't, there wasn't pork lard added. No, no, it was just uh, the process of cooking the corn with uh, clay, uh, limestone. Oh, so okay. And that, that's the nixtamalization. Yes. Okay. And it's one of the most ancient uh, techniques that we have, that we're still using nowadays. And that makes, the, that makes the corn more digestible and more... Digestible, it gives more calcium, more protein, and it's, uh, it preserves more the corn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's an ancient technique, right? Yes, actually you can see the first uh, corn tamales in a uh, uh, watermelon pyramid that it's uh, El Mirador. So the Mayan twins uh, were given as an offering the tamales and that's the first evidence, archaeological evidence um, of the use of this food. Okay. Ahora, moja de plátano. Okay, so that gets mixed in then made into little balls, and then flattened. Okay, and then it goes into a, a banana leaf. And so those tamales go in a bed of plantain leaves with water on the bottom. So they're gonna kind of boil and kind of steam all at the same time. So you see, now it turned the correct turn Yeah, the you can see that the color is really deep red. Oh, so that's coming along nicely. The aroma is unbelievable. Um, she said the flavor is ready but still needs another 30 minutes to boil, simmer, to bring the ingredients together, and especially to tenderize that turkey. So, Odilia brought some of uh, watermelon dishes also for you to try. These are tamales. This one is spicy, the other one is plain, and this is a very special dish that it's called revolcado. It's made with all the organs of the pork. Okay. So, it's one of the bizarre dishes that watermelon has. And here's a watermelon beverage. It's a fermented drink called chicha, made with the dried fruits. Okay. So they usually make, it's homemade drink, and 
it might have between five a uh, week or um, maybe 15 days of fermentation. Okay, so we have a few snacks. These are the snacks. We're gonna try them as the the kakaik is still boiling. Oh, gracias, okay. Okay. Which you can also add. This is a special mixture of peppers. This is a very common oh. uh, sauce to join with all the stews. So this is a stew mm -hmm. okay. with all the organs of the, the pork. Oh. Oh, it's so good. That you don't even need to chew. It just totally melts in your mouth. Mm. Those are the tenderest pig organs you'll ever have. They're just literally just jiggly, soft, melt in your mouth. And it has this kind of like a, kind of like a salty, maybe a tomato-y, like stew sauce gravy. Oh, it's so good. Definitely with a little bit of chili, that will be even better. So I'll add a little bit of this seasoning in here. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm That extra acidity from the lime juice, the crunch of the, the onions and the cilantro, a little bit of chili in there. All that rounds it out, that like contrasts the richness of it. Oh, this is delicious. This is like so warm and comforting. And again, just completely dissolves on your tongue. Oh, that sauce is incredible. These little peppers. Oh, excellent. So these are the tamales, and just look at this. This is one of the most beautiful tamales you'll ever see, the masa. Just, you can see the, the moistness, the oiliness. One of them is a little bit spicy, they said, and the other is not spicy, but I'm not totally sure which one. Oh, man. Mmm. Mmm. That is the moistest, like, fluffiest tamale you'll ever have. It's so juicy and just fluffy. Well, that's a tamale on another level. The quality, the flavor, the freshness, even the, the aroma of the banana leaf, which has just been embedded, steamed into that masa compared to other. Oh, okay, now we're getting to the meat inside of that. Maybe some pork and some olives in there as well. Mm. Yeah, without a doubt, some of the greatest tamales. There's that fluffiness is incredible. And then we also have a, a beverage which is called chicha here. And this is made from a variety of dried fruits and fermented. Ooh. Okay, I took a big gulp of that. That is sour, almost, yeah, vinegary. Oh, it is really good. Just don't take a huge gulp of it because it has that acidity. The acidity has already formed the vinegariness. It's so complex, so beautifully sour. And that like natural sweetness from the fruits. Oh, it's really, really good. So the, the wait for the kakik is ready. You can tell by how it kind of comes off the bone. The turkey has been boiled until it's tenderized. Rebecca, can you just tell us again what kakik means? Uh, kakik, it's in the Mayan Kekchi language. Kak means red and uh, okay. ik, it uh, means spicy or hot. Okay. So this is how the soup should so be, that's, very spicy. It's got to be red in color. Red in it's got to be spicy. All of those chiles and this is just absolutely just an honor to be here to see the traditional way that it's made. Okay, so what is the, what's the, the strategy? Okay, so first you take... Okay, so we grab one of the one, one tamales. Of the tamales okay. Yes, and the way that I like to do it is to put it inside the kakik. Okay. Oh, so you drop the whole thing into your, yes, your kakik? Yes, and then 
and just a little bit of the soup. Uh huh. Drop the whole thing in and take a piece of the, the tamale. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's so like light and refreshing and brothy, aromatic from the turkey and all of those. You really taste the toasty smokiness of all of those ingredients. The tomatoes, the chiles, but it's also not overpowering. It's kind of like a harmony of everything. Yes. Oh, that's like, it's almost medicinal. Nourishing oh, broth. Yes. 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 And if you want it uh, more spicy, it Families usually put some cobanero powder. So okay. You can so these are the these are the small little the small little chilies yeah. that they roasted that are in the recipe as well. And we have some of that powder, which you can also add to make it spicier. I can't wait to bite into this drumstick. Absorb all of the broth, the freshest turkey. Mm. It's so clean, so fresh. The texture is incredible. The skin is just kind of like perfectly kind of like rubbery. And then the meat on the inside is soft, tender, really flavorful. Yeah, look at that meat. Oh. Okay, and then I'll resubmerge. Oh, yes. Mm. And I think another thing is there's so much work that goes into this dish. Um, and that's like every step needs to be followed to make sure that the flavor is correct in the, mm -hmm. just the, I think the process of it is really just fascinating. A little bit of this chile. Yeah, oh. Oh, that's. <laughs> is that a lot? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> okay. Mm. Oh, so good. A little bit more heat, but again, it doesn't overpower it at all. It's just like, you can still feel the harmony of that broth. That is a, a stunning broth. How is it over there? Bien, muy, 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 muy bueno. Muy delicioso, muy delicioso. How is it, Rebecca? Really good. This is something you don't see often, so I'm just gonna take my time to taste a lot of love and patience made in yeah. this recipe. Love and patience, and so delicate. Yeah. So delicate. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just can't believe how clean, how delicate, how nothing is overpowering, even like. You kind of got to think about it to like taste the individual ingredients because they're all just in a perfect blended harmony together. Mm. It's the most satisfying way to drink that broth, just straight from the bowl. Oh, oh, that's good. Okay, I'll try a little more of this. This is onions with the chilies, coriander, cilantro, and lime juice. And I think this would be amazing right on top of the, the turkey as well, kind of giving it some acidity as well. Mm. Mm. That's so good as well because you've got the, the acidity of the lime juice. Mm. And all at once it started raining. But we've got another dish to try. Yep. And what is this one, Rebecca? This is called gallo and chicha. That is the, tur uh, the rooster meat. Oh, okay. So it's made with a tomato sauce, but the special ingredients that they use the chicha, that is the beverage. That's the thing that we drank already that's really sour and vinegary. Add the flavor the to give more flavor and aroma to the sauce. Oh, nice. Odilia was telling that this is the most uh, emblematic dish of the mm. town. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Of Santa Ana here. Si. Okay. Santa Ana. Oh, let's try that. And look at just, you can smell that sour aroma and then also the, just that thickness of that sauce. Oh. Take this one. Might have to. Okay. And I really want to get some of that sauce. Mm. Mm. Oh. 
Delicioso, sí. Muy bueno. Mm. That it has an sour. amazing sweet and sour, but not sweet in a sugar kind of way, in a fruity kind of way. Mm -hmm. Because of those fermented fruits that provide that just well-rounded fruity sweetness. Plus the sourness from the fermentation. The saltiness from the olives and the... That is incredibly tasty. Really good, really unique. Mm. When you finish that one tamale, keep on going for another tamale. And as opposed to the tamales that we had earlier for the snack, which was really moist and juicy, these are a lot more dense, a lot more like condensed, a harder texture to them. But that's the way you want it so it doesn't just fall apart, so it doesn't dissolve into the, the broth, so they hold their shape. Mm. Bite of the tamale, drink up the broth, bite of the turkey. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. That was so good. And the more I drink that broth, you could actually really taste the, I think it's called the yerba buena, that minty, that minty herb. You really actually taste that in the foundation, in the, in like all of the, just been boiled down that freshness. That was just superb, so clean. And I'm just finishing off with my cup of uh, chicha. This is an incredible beverage. And Rebecca was telling me that it's mostly made from the jocote fruit, which is kind of like a green mango, but you could just tell it has that fermented probiotic quality to it. Ah, kind of makes you squint, but it's just so good. That's gonna help with the digestion. They're setting up for a festival that's gonna happen this evening in Santa Ana in the main plaza. So you can hear some music starting to play. People are starting to set things up, but man, learning about kakik and the importance, the cultural significance, and seeing it prepared the authentic way using the ingredients and like the time-consuming way, it truly made a difference. That was a spectacular meal, an incredible, just showing the incredible depth of knowledge and complexity of Guatemalan Mayan cuisine. And I wanna say a huge thank you to Rebecca and her mother for arranging this and for setting it up and to our family for hosting us. Um, and they run a class here, which is actually, it's like a cultural learning program to preserve Mayan recipes. It's called Maya Is. And so definitely check them out when you are in Antigua and the adjacent Santa Ana, but highly recommended. That was, it was so cool. And if you haven't already checked out all the videos in this uh, Guatemalan series, we are traveling around the country of Guatemala, eating our way through the country, eating some of the best foods that you're not gonna wanna miss. So be sure to check out all the videos in this series. And I wanna say a big thank you for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Thanks again for watching.